We are talking the latest Detroit Lions news and rumors here. A lot to talk about in the Giants practice with the Lions. Hennon Hooker um, in some brawls that this video is all about. Let's go. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. At some point, everybody else is going to be on here. Uh, just waiting for... Just waiting, waiting, just like everybody else right now to see when that occurs. But trust me, everybody is going to be on here. It's a waiting process. In today's video, we're just talking about training camp right now. The latest headlines from Lions and Giants. And first round pick, Terry and Arnold took a massive hit. You can go on Twitter. You can go to probably Detroit or pretty much anywhere you type in uh, the hit that took place. And he stood his ground after he took a massive whopping from the left tackle. He's in concussion protocol. doesn't mean he has a concussion. It just means he's in protocol. Um, Terry Arnold's one tough SOB. Uh, hopefully he doesn't have a concussion. As we know, concussions are definitely not good for players to have, i.e. job at best. Um, so hopefully he doesn't have any. With that said, everything from what I'm hearing is just what we know. We don't really know a whole lot right now. Also, when it comes to injuries, Kevin Zeitler dealing with a shoulder injury. Don't know anything yet on that one. Hopefully by tomorrow's press conference when uh, Dan Campbell gets on there and speaks to the media, we'll get an update on those two. Who didn't practice? Brian Branch. He was just doing individual drills. Sam Laporte didn't practice. Nothing serious Dan Campbell spoke of. Let's get into the brawls here because I absolutely love it. Um, you guys need to check out the brawls. A lot of brawls in this practice. And it's the intensity of Dan Campbell and intensity of Brian DeBall in their teams. They're both physical football teams, and they went after it. And guess what? St. Brown, it was the second it was the second touch of practice. He's already getting into it, right? Uh, he stood his ground. He got a bunch of Giants surrounded him, and he wasn't scared. Panay Sewell was taking on four Giants by himself. We have Hulk. This is going to happen. I know a lot of people say, oh, no, undisciplined, blah, blah, blah. Folks, this is training camp at 90 degrees. You're finally going against another team. This is what occurs. This is the norm. Now, having maybe three fights is, is, is not the norm. Maybe there's only one usually fight at training camp. But, folks, these are grown men hitting each other. Of course, this is going to happen. And right after the scrum with St. Brown and the DB from the Giants, they're good to go. Like, th this is just what happens in football. So don't read too much into it if people are, are going crazy and undisciplined and all this type of stuff. That's just not the case. Let's get into here. Now, this is interesting because the Lions did the unofficial depth chart. Look at this depth chart and see, you know, backup quarterback Nate Sudfield, Okay. That's the unofficial depth chart. Now, I think this is a warning to Hennon Hooker, and that's what this is talking about, and I, I do concur with that. He's got to get more consistent. And as a matter of fact, Dan Campbell spoke, said it right here. Yeah, hopefully he, Hooker, just needs to take the next step, said head coach Dan Campbell earlier. We need to feel like by the end of camp, this guy can run this offense. He is somebody we know that, man, we can play the game in a certain way with him. We know he's going to be able to process the information. He's going to get us the right play, and he's going to keep the – the ship afloat. That's it. We don't need him to come in and win games. We just need him to feel all right. He hooker just needs to step up. Dan Campbell says it doesn't matter if it is us or if it's them or in the game. He just needs a reps, reps, and reps. And when he goes to bed, he needs reps. He wakes up, he needs reps. So anytime we out there and run the offense function, it's going to be good for him. I've been saying this for a while. Remember last year, he was he was red shirted. This is basically his rookie year, right? And he. Needs all the reps because he's a backup quarterback. He's not getting starter reps. He's not getting that. That's not the case. So he needs all the reps in the world. Dan Campbell's correct. In preseason, we got three preseason games for him to progress. That's what we want to see with Hennon Hooker is progression. How does he do? How does he do from the first preseason game to the second to the third, right? Today in practice, he scored a touchdown with his legs. He was athletic and showed it, but he also overthrew uh, Calhoun, wide receiver. So still inconsistency. It's going to be like this for a bit to get this man um, to be out there and get those reps. That's, that's just all it is. Okay, we've talked about it many times. Players learn at a different rate. Jamison Williams, it took him basically, what, two and a half years to get to this point now, three years 
You know, it took it took Derek Barnes all the way to last year. It it took uh, Ifutu Malfano to the end of last year. Sometimes players just learn at a different rate, and that's okay. That's just the the name of the business. Doesn't mean these players are busts. It doesn't mean that at all. I've heard that about a lot of players. Aiden Hutchinson when he's a bust after he had one game. Jameson Williams is a bust. Jack Campbell's a bust. 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 We 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 hear this thing thrown around a lot. And it's just not the case. So, no, it's not a bust. Give players three years. Give them time to develop. And in the case of Hennon Hooker, he just needs a boatload of reps. And just like Dan Gamble said, get reps in your in your sleep. Like that, you need to be doing football twenty four seven to get on to be that uh, QB two to protect the back end. You know to protect if Jared Goff goes down. Right. So one hundred percent there. And you look at you look more at. Let, let, let's get this. Let's see if I can blow this up a little bit more because um, I would like to view um, a little bit better here. Well, anyways, we're going to get into it, and I'm going to show you. So right there, you got Jamison Williams, St. Brown, one and two. Darius Fountain behind Jamison Williams. He, I do believe that Darius Fountain is going to make this team as the number four. Tom Kennedy, Isaiah Williams, way back there. Donovan Peoples-Jones. Moving behind Darius Fountain, and I think that's a, that's appropriate. It's very much the truth right there. No doubt about it. Nothing really, you know, crazy here. You got Cleef Raymond's number three. I've been saying this for a million years now. Jared Goff, David Montgomery, and, you know, Jameer Gibbs. They're all going to be right here. So, Dan Skipper right now is one of the backup tackles, and that's great to know. It's something we've been, we've been hearing here, right? Um, Colby Sorzer as well as another backup. Those are going to be your bookends. Brock Wright is your number two. Khalif Raymond is number three. And then you get Antoine Green coming in there. So it's going to be him and Donovan Peoples-Jones kind of battling it out to, to get that number five spot, in my opinion. Again, Sun, uh, Sunfield is listed as number two, but I think this is, this is just an unofficial one for a reason. Craig Reynolds coming up here. In the back end behind Montgomery and Gibbs. And Sione Vaki is number four. I really think that's what it's going to be. Now, you you can flip the Jameer Gibbs, right? The Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery is basically the same thing. And then you got Craig Reynolds and Sione Vaki. Um, uh, from the edge position, you got Marcus Davenport, Aiden Hutchinson, Lee McNeil, DJ Reader. That's going to be your starters. Reader obviously hasn't been practicing. Levi Muzurike has really jumped. Really, really took it a jump. He's going to make this roster. He's going to be a backup. Defensive tackle for sure. Uh, he could be back up one. There's no doubt about it. When it comes to the linebackers, you got Jack Campbell, Alex Anzalone. Derek Barnes is sitting in second string. I Again, I'm not going to put too much thought into this process here. They're all going to get a lot of playing time. Carlton Davis, Terry and Arnold, yes, yes. Ennis Rakestraw, Kendall Vildor is your two backups. That's good. Amik Robertson's the nickel. The Manuel Mosley behind him in the nickel. And we've been hearing about this, how he's been playing in the nickel. It's because they just want to get the best 11 on the field. And they know Manuel Mosley is a very talented player. So you're going to see that. You know, you look into the really back, the back string, the back end. You got Mitchell Agood, James Houston, right? Those guys are going to take care of that edge there. And Isaac Iwu. Backup of John Pascoe. John Pascoe, though, has got to present himself better, better or Mitchell Agood is going to jump him, in my opinion. I think it's, it's going to happen. That's what I have here. Ifutu, Malafonwu, Brian Branch, Kirby Joseph, Brandon Joseph. We don't, ex- CJ, we don't really know how the safety room, how they're going to put it, but they're going to get the playing time. CJ Moore is more of the special teams. Same with um, Khalil Dorsey right there. Not bad. A lot of these guys... We don't even really talk about Maurice Norris. Actually, had another good practice today. This is a this is a player that who could ascend. I see a situation where he gets close to making the roster. Still, it's going to be quite difficult because there's so many good players. But he has ascended now in the last couple of weeks. Jake Banks right now is your kicker. Um, they're going to bring in competition at some point. Jack Fox is the punter. Khalif Raymond, Craig Reynolds. Uh, uh, Khalil Dorsey, Donovan Peoples-Jones all up in there and punt and kick returner. That's going to be Khalif Raymond's job. That's going to be 
Craig Reynolds at some point as well. Uh, th- those are the jobs. And Sione Vaki will get in there and get the playing time. So that's, that's the unofficial depth chart. Uh, and again, I'm looking through this of what I've seen today in practice. If you want to see the, each what happened exactly in practice, you just go to my personal channel. I don't feel like really uh, rehashing the same stuff that we I talked about a couple hours ago. So um, it, it, the, the, let's do the trends here. Let's, let's do who's trending up. And we'll just go through some players. Not being the first string, really, right? We, we already kind of know the first string offense, who's going to be doing it. All these guys are pretty much trending up. Uh, we go to the second string. Training up, for sure, is Darius Fountain. Donovan Peoples-Jones training down. So Fountain, I do have making the roster here. Very, very good to see. Uh, Maurice Norris training up. And when you look at the other corners or safeties, not much trending down besides injury. So, I mean, it's it's really good right there. So, he's trending up. Good to see. Levi and Wuzurike, we've been talking about, is trending up for sure. He's He continues to make an impact for this football team. Really good. Trending down Jake Bates. Uh, kick, he's got to get better. He's got to get more sound in there. We want him to be a solid kicker for Detroit, but you got to get you got to get better than what you're doing. Hendon Hooker, I, I don't know where what he's really trending here. He's having a mixed bag, so I'm going to just say kind of even. Yes, he's had, he's made mistakes, but he's made some good plays too, so it's more of an even keel. And that's something you want to see out of Hendon Hooker is more consistency, right? And that Dan Campbell talked about consistency. You know what you have in golf. You know what you have in Sudfield, right? Right now, he's inconsistent, Hendon Hooker, because he's in the developmental stage. So hopefully he gets better. A lot of good a lot of good play. Not a lot of bad play. Not a lot of bad. And this is where this team is going. We, it's going to be hard to cut down to 53. I think I'll do a 53 prediction video within a week um, after two weeks of training camp. And I'll probably do a final one, I don't know, right after the second preseason game. I, I, I think at that point I'll pretty know it. Pretty much know it. So give me your thoughts in the comments below with the Lions news. With SF, folks, 